Welcome back. I'm Jennifer Maker and this is The Great Maker Show and Tell. Today we are making puzzles. Yes, puzzles. Did you know that you can make puzzles yourself? And that you can personalize your puzzles with your own photos or messages or anything? It's really cool and they make amazing gifts. You can use personalized puzzles for other things too. I've seen people use them to ask an important question, even the question. They're fun, unique, and even provide a little entertainment. And all you really need to make a personalized puzzle is a way to cut out your puzzle like a Cricut, some printable sticker paper, a printer to print your image on, and then you need your base layer. Now most people think of car chipboard as, um, or cardboard um, when they think of puzzles, and you can certainly use that, but there are other ways. So I've experimented with three different materials using three different Cricut blades. The regular fine point blade, the deep cut blade, and the relatively new knife blade. And you may be surprised at what worked best. So in this video, I will show you how to make a personalized picture puzzle using Cricut Design Space and either a Cricut Explorer or a Cricut Maker. To help us do this, I've created two brand new puzzle templates, a square version and a rectangular one. But I didn't stop there. <laughs> I also made one with a little heart-shaped piece, just like this one in the corner, because hearts. And I made a super special puzzle template. Uh, it has a hidden message that your recipient won't see until they put it together. How cool is that? I'm not even going to tell you. You have to watch the video. So to get my puzzle templates, go to my blog at jennifermaker.com and then head on over to Cricut Design Space so I can show you how to make these picture puzzles using your own photos or messages. So go to Cricut Design Space, click on New Project, then click Upload, then Upload Image, then Browse. And you'll want to find the Rectangle Heart Puzzle. We're going to work with that one first. Once that's uploaded, go ahead and click on it and insert images. All right, so here is one of the puzzle templates that I designed and you can see that it has a little heart piece in the corner. So now let's pick out an image to make with this. And I'm gonna put my uh, sun paper sunflower photo in here because it's so bright and cheerful. I really like this. So once it's uploaded, click complex and click continue. You can edit it if you want, but I'm not going to. So click continue and then save it as a print then cut image and click save. Now, depending on how big your photo is, it could take a little long for it to upload. So just be patient at this point. Once it's uploaded, click on it and then click insert image. And it'll appear on your canvas. Now we need to resize our photo or whatever image you've uploaded to match our size of our puzzle. Don't don't resize the puzzle, resize the uh, photo. And then drag the, the um, puzzle over and you'll notice that it's uh, behind. So go to arrange and choose send to front. And now the puzzle is on top of your photo so that you can size it. Now we want it to fit in the, the best way that we can and I've decided to put it this way. But we have this bit over here on the left. We need to get rid of that. So click on shapes and choose square. Click that unlock button and resize the square so that it's covering up that left side that we don't want. Okay. And then go ahead and move the puzzle section out of your way and select both that rectangle that you made and your photo and click slice just like we did yesterday. And by doing that, if we delete everything now on that left side, now we're left with just the photo that fits in the puzzle. Again, go up to arrange and send to front so that you can see it. All right, so there we go. This is what our puzzle will look like, but let's just make sure that our photo and our puzzle template are the same size, okay? So to do this, uh, you're going to um, go up to where it says size at the top You'll see it says 6.467.4. Yeah, I think so. We're going to copy that that number. We're going to move. We'll move um, the two layers so we can get to them easier. So we're going to paste it in here. So now 
Again, we don't want to resize our puzzle template, just our photo. So now our photo is the same width. Now let's go copy the height of the puzzle. Go back and select the photo. Click on that unlock button at the top and paste in the, the correct size. And now they're the same size. Select them both, choose a line, and then choose center. Center, and now they will center on top of each other and you can see exactly what your puzzle is going to look like. Awesome, so now click attach. All right, now they're attached together. And now it's time to think about what base layer you're gonna use for your puzzle. For this first one, I want to use a light chipboard. I don't have light chipboard, so I'm gonna use a cereal box because it's basically light chipboard, isn't it? So I want you to go to these three uh, lines in the upper left-hand corner. And then I want you to choose Manage Custom Materials, okay? And then choose your Cricut if you have more than one connected. And when this comes up, I want you to do a, you can scroll through this list, but it's like not even in alphabetical order. It's a pain to find anything in this list. So I want you to search, so just do like Command F, Control F, and I want you to search for Serial, okay? So then you'll find the Serial Box item there. It's in orange right now. It's found it for us. So we're gonna edit this. We're gonna click on the edit button. And I want you to edit it to have um, pre pressure of 348. And I want the, the this drop down menu to say 3X and then click save. So this is what you need to cut a puzzle on a cereal box. Because the reason why we're changing this because we're adding an extra layer, okay? So go ahead and click make it and um, First, you're going to print your sheet of printable sticker paper on your printer. So this is what I'm doing right now. So one full sheet of eight and a half by 11 sticker paper. You could use printable vinyl if you wanted, if you didn't have that. So here it is. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it onto a cereal box, okay? So, you know, a sticker paper is adhesive on one side, right? So we're going to cover the Rice Krispie side of our cereal box so that the other side is just plain old chipboard, which is what we're looking for, light chipboard. Of course, you don't have to use a cereal box. I just didn't have any light chipboard and I had a cereal box, so why not? So we've cut it down to the right size. So take off the uh, backing on your um, printed sheet and cover the printed side of your cereal box and press it down really good and cut off the excess. And there we go, now we're ready to cut this out. So we're gonna use the Strong Grip mat and just put that on there like you would normally. Go back to Cricut Design Space and click on Browse Materials, search for Serial, choose Serial from the list, click Done. Choose More Pressure and then let's cut it. So here we go. Now, to cut the cereal box, Cricut Design Space told us that we need to use the deep cut blade, which I have here. That's in this black housing, right? This works on both the Explorer and the Maker. So this is a, you can cut cereal board on either one. I use the Maker in my videos because it's out in the brighter area for videos. I, but I like to cut things on my Explorer too, don't worry. All right, so we're just gonna have this, uh, put this in and the first thing that it's going to do is it's gonna look for all of those guidelines, so those big black, that big black border around our image. That is the calibration marks for the print then cut feature. So it, it'll do this thing where it like looks at the lines first and then once it's sure of where, uh, you know, the, the image is, then it starts cutting, which is exactly what it's doing right here. And here we go, it's cut. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, just flip over your mat and uh, there's our puzzle. Of course, we have to get it off. You could take it off one by one, but I, I <laughs> there's definitely a better way of doing this. I mean, this is a strong grip mat, so it doesn't really wanna come off all that easily. But the faster way to do this is to turn your mat over onto the uh, onto your surface. Bend your mat, right? Just like I've taught you. And very slowly help all of the puzzle pieces come off. 
the fact that they're all locked together right now helps helps that. All right, shall we put this puzzle together? <laughs> so I, I went ahead and I did this. I've sped this up, of course. My hands do not move that fast. I put this puzzle together because I wanted to see if it would actually work. I mean, it's one thing to make something that looks good, but can I actually put it together as a puzzle? And I am very pleased to say that absolutely, yes, this felt like a puzzle to me. Um, there was nothing weird about it um, at all. It was actually really awesome to think that I made this puzzle on my Cricut and I got to use whatever photo I wanted, right? I mean, that opens up a lot of possibilities. It really does. What's cool is that this is, um, you know, this this pattern is a real puzzle piece pattern. So, that, you know, there there's slight differences. There's slight differences and um, so they won't, you know, just go in anywhere. And it's just like a regular puzzle. I'm sure we've all put puzzles together before. And there's the last piece. There it is. You can see it, right? Looks like a regular old piece of puzzle piece. So let's put this in. There we go. I mean, think of all the cool things that you could make with this, right? And then you have this little heart left and you could put it in, but I think it looks a lot cuter if you leave it out, right? Because then you can see the heart easier. Now let me show you a trick for getting this finished puzzle onto like a different backing so you could display it. So we're going to use our light grip Cricut mat to uh, flip it over and then we're going to put a piece of white craft board that I've put some spray adhesive on onto it and then it comes right off and it stays stuck on the craft board so that you can frame it or do whatever you'd like. Just burnish it down, make sure that it's nice and stuck on there and then take that little heart and put it in the corner. I'm going to put a little glue dot on it so it stays right there in the corner. Isn't that super cute? I'm really happy with how this turned out. Okay, so since that worked so well, I decided to try it on heavy chipboard instead of the light chipboard, which is what I just used. We're going to use heavy chipboard. This stuff is very thick. It's not at all very flexible. So I printed out the same image so that we can compare them. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to remove the adhesive from the back and put it up in the, you know, the upper left-hand corner of my piece of chipboard. Again, this is heavy chipboard, and this is the, the Cricut brand of heavy chipboard. So smooth that all down. All right, let's put this on our mat. Again, we're going to want to use the strong grip mat for this. This is really important because when we do a heavy chipboard, uh, there's a lot of passes. So we had three passes with the light chipboard, but with heavy chipboard, there's 20 passes. At least that's how much there was for me. That's kind of crazy, right? So you need to tape it down or else it might start moving around on you. And this is what Cricut says to do too. And I just use this painter painter's tape. So we're going to put in our knife blade. So this is a maker only thing. There is no knife blade available on the Explorer. But we're going to try this and see how it works. And it's the same thing. It calibrates it for the print and cut image. And then once it finds it, it starts cutting it out. Now, the knife blade told me that it was going to take over six hours. Okay, so I came back and checked it after dinner. And this is what I saw. It had made five passes. And some of the the image had started coming off in one of the corners. I don't know why. The rest of it was fine. But in that one in that one corner, the paper had started peeling off. So obviously this was a fail. <laughs> and I went ahead and paused it. Um, because that's not going to work. So I don't did not finish cutting it out. I think that in time it would have, you know, in six hours it would have cut out that puzzle but it seems to me that more than a few passes is too much for the printable sticker paper that I used it's just not that strong to with hand you know withstand so much cutting right so much you know action and stuff all right okay so let's try our third material so I thought well you know if light chipboard worked well why not craft board. So we're going to use our other, uh, the other cool one I designed. That's the love puzzle. 
All right, this is the one with the hidden message. So we're gonna upload this one to Cricut Design Space. And um, go ahead and insert our image onto our canvas. And you can see the hidden message here. So the idea is that when somebody, um, the, the recipient can't see the message, they just get a box full of puzzle pieces, right? That's how that works. Um, but after they put it together, then they can see the message that says, love you to pieces, right? Okay, so let's find an appropriate image. Now I am making this as a gift for Greg. So I am going to look for um, an image that, of significance to us, and that is one of our very favorite places, Castaway Key. That, that's Disney Cruise Line's private island. Um, that is our, one of our very special places. So I'm going to upload this photo, and I'm going to use this as the photo for my for my puzzle. All right, so we've uploaded that, and then we're going to insert it. And we're to be a little patient. If your photo is at all large, it will take time for it to come in, you know, import. All right, so there it is. And we need to resize it. So I'm going to make the canvas a little smaller so I can see it. And I'm going to just click that double arrow icon in the bottom to get my image to be, you know, a similar size to the puzzle template itself. Now it's a little bit too narrow for the puzzle. So we're going to want to make it a little wider so that our photo fits completely on the puzzle. All right, but still it's, you know, there's a bit at the top that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to click on shapes and click square, just like we did with the um, other one. And we're going to get rid of the part that we don't want. And then select both that part both the photo and that uh, box and click slice and um, delete all the bits at the top and then you're left with the image that you want. By the way, this is a photo of me on the beach. Those are my feet. <laughs> all right, so you wanna make these exactly the same size just like we did with the first, uh, the first photo. So get the sizes of the um, puzzle template and paste them into the size for your photo. Okay, make sure you click that unlock button so that it is exactly the same size. Now, um, click send it back so that you can then see it and then select everything and do a line and center and click attach. And there you go, you're all ready to print and cut this puzzle. Now, we're gonna go to manage custom materials again and choose our Cricut. And this time we're using craft board, right? So uh, do a search for craft. <laughs> you can, again, you can, you can try to scroll this list. It's just very long. Do a search for craft, it's spelled with a K, and you want craft board. So click edit next to that and make sure that it's set to 3X and a pressure of 305 and it's the, um, fine point blade and click save. These are the right settings. All right, there we go. Now click make it. Let's address that. So click continue, uh, select your Cricut, and then you'll want to first print it, right? So click send to printer and go ahead and print it onto your printable sticker paper or your printable vinyl. I didn't try it with vinyl. I just know that um, it's been used before with success. So if that's all you have, go ahead and try that. But I had the sticker paper. All right, and then click on Browse All Materials and uh, do Craft Board and click Done. All right, now let's cut out this puzzle. All right, so I'm gonna use my Strong Grip mat again. Um, just to make sure that all those puzzle pieces stay in place since we're cutting it three times and that can make things kind of shift around. So put that on your mat, make sure that it's um, adhering well and load it in. And when it's ready, press the flashing button. So now we're going to use our, we're just using normal fine point blade. I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and sharp. So I'm gonna use my aluminum foil ball and um, poke it, because this usually sharpens it up. In fact, it always sharpens it up for me. And then put it back in machine. Make sure it's seated all the way down. 
and close up the clamp. All right, now we're ready to cut. Now again, this is a print and then cut image, so it's going to want to calibrate first and then it'll be done cutting. So it does the same thing, checks all the lines to make sure that it's you know, going to cut right where the image is, which is great because then you don't have to worry about it being like slightly like, you know, off center or whatever. It does a great job. And then it starts cutting and this will cut three times. All right. So here we go. It's all cut out and you can see what it looks like. Looks like a puzzle, doesn't it? <laughs> So it's all cut out on the craft board. So we flip our mat over and we peel it off. And again, because it's on the strong grip mat, it just wants to stick, right? That's okay. It's better that it, the pieces not move around than that they be a little bit more challenging to take off at the end, I think. So this puzzle piece, you know, the pieces um, where the letters are, are a little bit unusual. So you'll want to go a little slower when you're taking them off because they're not the t they're not all the same basic size. So just be patient and take them off gently. So here's all of our pieces. I'm not going to put this one together because I'm giving it to Greg. It's pretty awesome really that we can make this on our machines at home. So I want to compare the first one we did on the light chipboard, AKA cereal box to the last one we did on the craft board to see if we can notice any real differences between the two. So the one on the left is craft board and the one on the right is cereal box board. And I want you to see how thin they are and how they compare to each other. They're actually really similar, but if you look closely, you can see that the cereal box, so that would be light chip board, appears to be a little bit thicker than the craft board. Right? And that's helpful when it comes to a puzzle. So if I were to do this again, I would either use a cereal box again, but you know, there's only so many boxes of cereal in my house. So, and of course now all those bags of cereal are now laying around without boxes. I would order light chipboard uh, because that clearly is what's working the best here. So, I mean, the craft board is okay in a pinch, but um, I would say that the light chipboard is the winner here. Once you know how to make these puzzles, they are so easy to do. So why not make picture puzzles for everyone this year and put them in those cute gift boxes that we made a few days ago? Boom, presents for everyone done. <laughs> I am planning to give this special hidden message puzzle to, to Craig for Christmas. Hopefully he's not listening or will we'll watch this video. And then once he puts it together, I'll frame it and put it up on the wall in our bedroom. And if you make a puzzle, please, please, please share your photos in our Facebook group or use hashtag, make, hashtag maker show and tell. Now, even though today's experiment with a knife blade didn't quite pan out, I'm still in the mood to make something with it. You, actually, I want to make some wood. I want to do a wood project. So that'll be tomorrow's project. And don't forget to send in your project ideas at jennifermaker.com slash show and tell. And remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until tomorrow. Yeah.